Greetings, it's New Zealand naturopath Eric Becker, author of Candida Crusher and formulator of the Candida, Candida Dietary Supplements. I'm going to do another case history today. This is a 62 year old lady called Anne with, who came into the clinic with rheumatoid arthritis and yeast infection and irritable bowel syndrome. So I'm going to read out of my book some of the excerpts out of my book and then I'll give you some comments on this case as well. If you've got rheumatoid arthritis or autoimmune disease, something like lupus or Sjogren's, you know, scleroderma, a condition like that, you could well have an underlying yeast infection, bowel problem. It's very, very common. So I'm just going to read some bits and pieces out of the book to familiarize you with the case. So Anne is a retired accountant who'd been suffering from as long as she could remember with headaches, nasal congestion, irritable bowel syndrome, and several other complaints, including a persistent fungal infection of several toenails. Six years ago, she was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. We also uncovered two root canal teeth that had been quite sensitive for several years. I referred Anne to a dentist friend who examined her mouth and mentioned that her two teeth required extraction because a low-grade infection was present. <clears throat> this can actually be seen on an x-ray. So if you have root canal teeth, particularly if they're sensitive to touch or they bleed, you know, the gums bleed around them, you may want to get an x-ray done. After careful extraction, the sockets were carefully cleaned and, wait, and we waited for until her mouth was sufficiently healed before we undertook a detoxification program that lasted about six weeks. It took four months of treatment, but her painful fingers and wrists were getting less painful by the week. So remember, this was rheumatoid arthritis. This patient was taking several medications for rheumatoid arthritis, including anti-inflammatories and even drugs like methotrexate, which are a chemo chemotherapy kind of a drug. After six months, the pain had gone from a scale of 8 out of 10 down to 2 out of 10. And it improved so much, in fact, her headaches were long gone, and so was her nasal congestion. Many people with root canal teeth, particularly in the upper jaw, uh, or dead teeth, will often have nasal congestion or sinus infection as a result of uh, basically the, the socket seeding bacteria, anaerobic bacteria, into this maxillary sinus area here. So her bowel was almost back to normal at this stage. We had Anne on the low allergy diet and she had followed this religiously for six months until one day she decided enough was enough. She started to drink a glass of wine with dinner each evening and then the chocolates crept back in. She was in my room within two weeks complaining that the pain had crept back six out of ten and was steadily getting worse by the day. I asked Anne what had happened and she replied, well, I was feeling so good that I thought a glass of wine here or there wouldn't hurt. And she said she was disappointed with the treatment and she felt she was going backwards. This is when I showed her the diagram uh, and I said it's common for someone to feel well and then all of a sudden feel unwell, particularly if they slip back to bad habits. In my book, I've actually drawn a diagram of how people uh, think they get well and how they actually recover from a chronic candida infection or any kind of chronic illness. So... Okay, so I've written here, you improve and then you think all is well and then you go back to your normal lifestyle. I asked her this, did you improve initially? She said emphatically, yes, I haven't felt that well for as long as I can remember. And that's when I said, well, you must have been on the right track then. The problem is we didn't keep you on the path long enough and somehow you lost and took a sidetrack. Anne's husband said that his wife thought that she was cured. And this is what I commonly find with many people. They start out with the right intentions and they want, to get, they want to get well bad enough to be good for several weeks, for several months. But then the boredom creeps in. The patient becomes frustrated and wants to resume the same diet and lifestyle they had prior to developing the complaint. What they may not be aware of is that what one or several of these lifestyle or dietary factors contributed to their demise of health initially. If they only held out just a bit longer and reintroduced these offending foods and drinks slowly, starting with the items least likely to be problematic. People often have a tendency to reintroduce their favorite treats all too early. So this could be you. You know, many people don't recover, but when they do recover, and they recover steadily but surely, they slip back. They start doing the things that they did a long time ago, and then they start regressing and going backwards again. To them, it may seem like the treatment's not working. But what they did is they went back to old habits, it makes sense, doesn't it? Anne left my clinic understanding that it was all up to her. 
It was going to take time and there will be plenty of ups and downs. No smooth sailing, no quick fixes, no BS. If she, if she's going to get 100% well, she has to work hard and persistently and be logical in her approach to recovery. I found that as the gut improves, the fungal condition slowly disappears. And particularly if you look at the toenails, you'll see a clear demarcation of the healthy toenail growing out and the fungal nail you know, above it. This is a sign that the digestion is improving quite well in most cases. Doctors see no link between a fungal toenail at all and a candida digestive problem, which is ridiculous because everything in the body is connected. So, are you like Anne? Are you a person who has lost the, the persistence or the ability to really want to recover from a yeast infection? That's the point I'm trying to make here. If you really want to recover and recover really well, you need to stay on track long enough and not get sidetracked, not let, not take detours here or there or go sightseeing, you know, into things like chocolates or wine, you know, or beer or whatever it is that your treat is, because these are the things that are going to lead to your demise. Okay. They can lead to depression and anxiety because you feel you're not recovering from this chronic condition. So I hope that's given you a bit of an insight into recovery from a chronic condition like rheumatoid arthritis. It is absolutely possible to recover, but it takes a lot of persistence and hard work on your part. You know, either that or you stay on pharmaceutical drugs for 10, 20 or 30 years plus and pay the consequences of the devastating side effects of these treatments. The ball's in your court. Don't forget to check out yeastinfection.org and also have a look at my comprehensive online candida uh, quiz, my survey. If you go to candidacrusher.com, you can find one of the world's best online quiz, uh, surveys to determine if you've got mild, moderate or severe yeast infection. And don't forget my antifungal, Kenzida. That's C-I-N-X-I-D-A, kenzida.com. You'll find that. It's one of the best antifungal products on the market. Thanks for checking out my video.